We're at the sidelines of the World Economic Forum, speaking with Indonesia's Foreign Minister, Martin Natalagawa. Minister Natalagawa, thank you so much for coming to join us. Let me ask you, um, what have been your takeaways? This is the first day of the World Economic Forum. Well, I think first and foremost, uh, the people of the Philippines must be uh, congratulated. Oh, what a way to, uh, to uh, recognize the tremendous uh, progress the Philippines has been making over the past years. Uh, the Philippines' economy has been one of the most uh, robust and resilient, but at the same time, its democracy uh, is becoming ever more strengthened. It's, uh, it just shows how good governance and uh, economic growth they are not uh, inimical to one another. And I think the Philippines is showing all of us in our region uh, that this is actually do, uh, two objectives that can go hand in hand. The Philippines and Indonesia have a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. um, how would you assess now that this is the tail end of President Udiono's? Well, you know, I mean, one, when one looks at the uh, regional context first, uh, the Philippines and Indonesia are two important democratic pillars within ASEAN. So as we are now approaching ASEAN Community 2015, it's even more important two like-minded democracies in ASEAN work very closely. But uh, that requires, first and foremost, our two countries becoming even more closer. And, and it's good that on the occasion of the President's visit to Manila uh, this time, we are going to sign uh, a maritime delimitation agreement, yes. uh, exclusive economic zone agreement. After 20 years of negotiations, uh, back in 2011, myself and the sec Foreign Secretary, uh, uh, we resolved to, to finally have a good uh, conclusion. And uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we are going to sign this agreement, which for the first time uh, are going to define and delimit our uh, maritime ec exclusive economic zone uh, in, a certain, in a legally binding way. This is like good friends, a good fences make good Absolutely. Neighbors. I mean, yeah. what, this is a very strong message to the rest of the region that it is not impossible to find a resolution to any overlapping territorial claims. As you know, the, of course, the Philippines, on the South China Sea, Vietnam. We, are try, we need to infect a more uh, positive uh, momentum, create yes. more positive momentum. It's not a given that we are always in a state of a vicious cycle of tensions and, and, and mistrust. And uh, Indonesia and the Philippines working hand in hand, I think, can be part of that uh, game-changing, uh, uh, momentum-building uh, situation. Yeah. Indonesia is one of the founders of ASEAN and uh, a linchpin mm -hmm. of ASEAN now. Uh, people are saying now that Indonesia should take a larger role in ASEAN. De facto, informally, you have. You were the one who shuttled back and forth mm -hmm. to get an agreement out of Cambodia. We're seeing a, a changing ASEAN also. Mm -hmm. I guess this ASEAN, what do you see are its strengths and its weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Well, Indonesia within ASEAN, uh, there are certain basic objective uh, realities that makes Indonesia not an insignificant part of within ASEAN. You're humble. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, one must recognize that uh, leadership must be earned. Uh, it's, it's not something that just uh, comes just like that. We have to develop a sense of comfort level, a sense of trust. And, and in Indonesia's case, often it means less is more. Uh, we have to uh, bring about a sense of leadership and, and common purpose but not suffocating and, and, and creating, uh, minimizing space for others to, to, to develop their own capacity. So a sense of ownership is very, very important, but uh, there, will, there are moments when we need to really step up to the plate yeah. and, and try to deliver. And uh, the, key, the issue of the South China Sea, uh, if I can go back to that again, for us is a litmus test for ASEAN. It's not about uh, taking sides, but it is uh, uh, a challenge for ASEAN to be able to deliver on its uh, centrality role. Yes. And, and that is why it's very, very important for all of us to show solidarity, to maintain unity on this issue. In many ways, China's moves will define ASEAN as a regional entity, is that mm -hmm. correct? Well, yes, uh, but you know, I mean, we, together with China, we would like to develop a new type of international relations where countries can unite not because of fear of another country, 
You know, we don't need a, a country to threaten uh, to bring to us together. It's a win-win, uh, uh, mutually beneficial type of relationship. So when we, when ASEAN comes together and unify, it's not meant to be inimical to, to anyone. So China is a very strong, important partner to, to ASEAN, but uh, it must actually deliver on the uh, commitments, on the de declaration of conduct that we have all signed on board on. So it's a, a crossroad of a sort we are now facing, but uh, all of us must contribute to, uh, to overcoming those challenges and opportunities. You're seeing Philippines take a legal route. Vietnam mm. is much closer to a really conflict of a mm. sort. How are, is Indonesia looking at this and what are you going to do? Well, uh, we have to we have to first of all recognize that there is no uh, military solution to this issue. Uh, military solution, whether use of force, threat of force, uh, can only bring about temporary solution or temporary gains to whoever feel that they have made gains. Because security is is uh, is uh, common goods. It must be enjoyed by all. It cannot be at the expense of the other. That is why we have to promote peaceful settlement of disputes. It could be diplomacy, it could be negotiations, it could be legal processes, uh, anything as long as it's not the use of force. And, and I think our region uh, must recognize that we have all been uh, beneficiaries to, to the peace that we have long enjoyed. How would you define China today? Uh, we see China's rise as being an opportunity, uh, not necessarily as a challenge. Uh, but that kind of mindset must be, uh, we must work hard to ensure that is actually the case. Because now we may be entrapped in a self-fulfilling type of a zero-sum game assumption. So whenever situation this type, uh, suggestion of this type arises, we must uh, fight against it and we must offer an alternative vision. This is what Indonesia is trying to offer. So last question, mm -hmm. as, as Indonesia faces its third direct presidential mm -hmm. elections, and how do you see Indonesia moving into the world now? Well, uh, Indonesia is uh, now, with the Philippines, part of the democratic architecture in the region. It's great that we are now entering our election uh, process, where we'll be having the renewal of our democratic mandate to the next government. Uh, but come what may, I think Indonesia will continue to play a very constructive role in our region and present itself as part of the solution to many of the region's uh, problems and, and uh, take advantage of its opportunities. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Indonesia's Foreign Minister Marty Natalegawa at the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. I'm Maria Ressa Rappler. Thank you for joining us.